confrontation between ethnic factions has escalated dramatically throughout the Russian countryside as food rationing was cut short. Fiscal shortfalls were blamed as the U.S. defense budget was slashed to a bare minimum. China's premier announced today that his country will see control of traditional Chinese territories. Preparing martial law. A Russian president ordered the newly erected Taiwanese Independence Party severed all ties with China. Calling Taiwan's declaration of independence an act of insurrection, China moved to blockade the island and warned other countries to stay out of Southeast Asia. Chinese and Vietnamese naval forces clashed once again in the South China Sea. As Chinese forces launched the full-scale invasion of Taiwan, Ordering the U.S. 7th Fleet into the Taiwan Straits. When the aircraft carrier USS Lincoln was sunk off the coast of Taiwan, Chinese officials claimed the U.S. 7th Fleet violated the territorial agreement. My fellow Americans, 16 hours ago, Chinese forces launched an unprovoked attack against the U.S. 7th Fleet, killing over 1,300 Americans. This will not stand. Today, the United States and her allies have declared war on the People's Republic of China. Hello there, welcome to my new LP series of People's General 3.0. And introduction, wow, that was something else, wasn't it? I mean, from the way they was explaining things and how everything just went off kilter and into, um, as I say, what do you call it, hell in a hand basket? Yeah, this could be, in fact, Fantasy General 3.0 because a lot of the things explained there is just pure speculative, uh, fantastical, far-fetched kind of scenarios that uh, back in 1998, SSI thought could very well lead to conflict in East Asia. I mean, it's rather volatile. You know, volatile region. I'm not really that much of a news junkie. I do read like CNN or you know CBC, whatever, and trying to check up on what is happening around the world. And right now, it seems to be at least in my side of the world. The, I guess the biggest news right now is this heat wave. This heat wave is just so crazy, like 30 degrees Celsius, and that is like hundred. Ah, uh, no, not hundred. Sorry, I'm just exaggerating. Around ninety. 90 or 90, I think 89 Fahrenheit. Um, but then in my neck of the woods, I mean, that kind of weather, that kind of climate continuing for months on a straight is just crazy. Yeah, so I think the environment disasters and the global warming will, you know, lead to even more disasters and uh, putting people's lives at risk more than any speculation of war or any kind of spectral war looming elsewhere in the halfway around the world but I mean who knows what's going to happen obviously the SSI development team didn't know about you know attack on the World Trade Centers in 2001 I think three years after the game was released and that probably just changed the entire worldwide politics in I guess it kind of uh, put the entire relations and worldwide politics and expectations and regional considerations into a flux and United States you know refocused its arms and materials and its regional strategy to Middle East and now I think they are trying to turn their eyes on China so I guess you know in a way come from certain uh, I guess it's grounded in a bit of a basis of reality but I mean you know I guess China and Japan kind of having a bit of a trouble with each other right now on uh, some island or sea and China has uh, some problems with Philippines and Vietnam of course and then the introduction says that as much that they had some problems with the Vietnamese on the seas. Unfortunately, uh, that kind of battles will not play out here because in people's general, I think the naval uh, aspect of warfare is not well represented. But who knows? I mean, this is 3.0, so it could all change. Uh, but at least official campaign, at least we are dealing with the China uh, rising to a superpower status. I think China is superpower now. I think they would be considered superpower. United States, I guess, uh, will be then hyperpower even more, it's like one rank up. And Russia is portrayed here as a bit weak and down on its luck. But right now Russia is definitely very strong, even though they have the sanctions and the problems with Ukraine and um, they kind of ostracize Russia in a way, but Russia in of itself, its power or at least its prestige is not going to go down. 
You know, as I read from somewhere once again, I'm sorry, I don't seem to have an opinion myself, but I'd like to set the record straight on the, yeah, what I think and uh, what I try to do here in the game LP and not really interject with a lot of politics. The introduction kind of blew that all away because it described how everything is going to play out, so I had to explain that it's not the case, but this is just a game, it's a game of risk, for example. So yeah, I believe that I read from somewhere that the Russians have never been more prosperous uh, in their in generations, maybe in the entire history. So they're strong now. So I don't think China would be, you know, I think it would be very unwise for China to attack or make belligerent out of Russia. It is true, like they explained in the introduction, that United States kind of scaling back its military budget due to the you no know, concerns in its finances. I guess its debt is still uh, tremendously large. So that's true. So it's time for China to act, or is the military of China still to uh, restrain itself while the the vast economic engine of the world still has more to lose than to gain by causing military conflict with its neighbors? Yeah. So I think that this is a really interesting uh, stuff to discuss and to you know. From time to time to see whether this game has it right and i think this game kind of got it rather correct in terms of um you know trying to see where the warfare armed warfare combined warfare evolved from the world war ii era through the cold war which they skipped well maybe not skip but then out of cold war right into the conflict uh i guess so-called world war three um, if you want to ask my opinion once again, uh, which I have very few of, the region of most instability or the potential to destabilize the entire world is of course right now. I mean, anybody could see this in the Middle East with Syria and um, Iraq and Iran. It's very unstable with Egypt. I don't know, maybe they have a new government there, but who knows what's going to happen. It's probably where the... Yeah, that's probably the powder keg right now. Uh, maybe North Korea is going to cause something. I don't really have any idea of how unstable that region is. But it could be pretty dangerous. I mean, North Korea with its young leader is, I don't know, just seems to be very happy about things that are going there. But who knows? I mean, there are a lot of news about, you know, people getting killed by these outrageous means by like anti-aircraft guns or something or artillery. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I mean, enough of that. This is Pen People's General 3.0. And as you can see, this has been heavily modified uh, throughout the years since its release. I think there was only one year of development for this game from Pentium General 2, which is um, crazy. One year of crunch time, I think. But I guess you can say that Pentium General 2 set the standard in a way. It's a new living battlefield system. And they have basically released this as expansion pack or standalone expansion pack as they call it now. But from what I read from the net, they changed a lot about the engine. They modified it and then they upgraded it to include new disciplines of combat, such as air superiority, a new concept that I'm going to be discussing in due time. One other thing is that they made this engine highly configurable so that people were able to extend the longevity of this game like decade after it was released. Uh, some people wanted more World War II, so they recreated Panzer General 2 campaign missions, all in entirety, to be played on People's General. So this is just uh, very highly configurable, flexible, although it requires a lot of time, I'm sure, with sweat and toil on the part of the modders that have thankfully brought this game to where it is, 2.0, and uh, has not finished yet. It's still in beta, but I think you can see that it was the last time they released this uh, executable, 3.0 executable with a new e-file. I don't know what that exactly is, but I think that's an equipment file. It's 2007, eight years ago, so unfortunately I think the development on this has ceased. But then the creators of this game probably thought that this was good enough to be the finalized and most definitive version of what playing People's General 3.0 or People's General itself is like. Yeah, so that's the version that I am trying to, or I will be willing to play. But then People's General, as it was released, uh, it's probably a whole different game, it would seem like, if compared to this version. So People's General 1.0 is also with, included in the package that I downloaded, and I'm going to be giving you the link uh, if you're interested. I'm sure that all of you probably have the game 
uh, right now because it has been released for a number of years and I'm really thankful for uh, Robert Mary for compiling everything to be workable state even you know eight years after this game has ceased updating I'm sure that the campaign and the scenarios not the executables itself are the most important aspect because it's a content the engine you know update can only go so far you need a new fresh coat of paint so to speak something to play with on this uh, newly updated engine to make the game worthwhile so I think the campaigns and scenarios are still there but I'm really thankful that it was still up there um, I was able to download it without scarring the more deep and more uh, you know kind of seedy reaches of the web in order to make things work and of course I mean it been impossible because this game probably was only compatible with Windows 95 or 98 it was released in 98 so yeah 98 and ME which I have but ME kind of sucks so <laughs> I'm really thankful anyways yeah that this game works and um, game executable that I downloaded from uh, I think the underdogs website kind of crashes right out of the gate so I cannot use that I have a question to ask you whether you'd be more uh, willing to watch the first version of the game most closely resembling the game that was released or the 3.0 um, that now I have open and I guess kind of is the be all and all experience that one can have in people's general with updated uh, patches and balances and fixes to the campaigns and of course the expanded rosters of weapons and countries I'm sure that the campaign itself originally it would not be that different, but still it's going to be, you know, not be the original experience that one would get from the game itself. But then I'm just asking whether people would be more willing to watch the first version. Um, like People's Journal 1.0, which I can play. I can even interchange between different versions, I think, but I don't know whether that's going to cause a lot of problems. I think it would, naturally. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to ask you guys to see uh, whether you are up for 3.0 or 1.0, the original one, or even 2.0, which does not include some of the features. But it seems to be more complete in a way that each out of beta has been released, but then who knows? I mean, I searched the web to see the difference between all three. I will show you uh, the difference in due time. But first, let's jump right into it and see exactly what this game plays like, how this game plays like, and how different it is from Panzer General 2. If you have seen previous LP of Panzer General 2, then you'll be rather familiar with how it works. Although my rather unsteady mouse and of course the constant wheezing to and from really didn't help matters. But yeah, I'm sure you remember how it works generally, and I try to play a scenario here and see how different things are. The tutorial scenario is capture Su Chan and Artem and their nearby airfields to win four turns. So this is really quick enough. Perfect for tutorial. As you can see, it starts with this little uh, pop-up uh, tutorial, United States turn one out of four. Monday, April 3rd, 2006. Yeah, and conditions, fair day, air superiority. That's a new concept of 90%. So 90% is a good number. Uh, as you can see, there's a new button here uh, indicating air missions, I think. Yeah, air missions. Which is, um, in people's general, there are no planes per se. Of course, there are planes in the third version, but then the original version didn't have anything. Uh, they replaced it by making air missions possible. And this is where you basically fly air missions. Uh, tailored specifically for particular situations or particular function and you have a current air point which is 35 and this determines this 90% figure determines how many points that you're going to get from the scenarios to scenarios or campaign scenarios and um, if you increase it of course the prestige is going to be lowered because you're spending prestige to increase the air points that is going to be used for air missions and we have different missions here called Wild Wild Weasel, sorry, which is uh, specifically targeting the very much wanted and effective anti-air, ground anti-air weapons or equipment. Very important because in this game, air security and then the controlling the air is that much more important, much more than Panzer General 2, I felt. And there are a lot of different anti-air equipment and vehicles, and of course there are shoulder-mounted rocket-based 
air deterrent as well. So yeah, I mean, there is a whole slew of things that you need to take care of to make this effective for your helicopters and other um, air-based vehicles. The wild weasel targets anti-air. I hope that I didn't go around the way of explaining things. Air strike is simple enough. Basically strikes anything on the ground, preferably against the hard armor target. Air recon is also very, very important. I think you're going to see a lot of the air recon missions being flown because you need to see what is up on ahead. You cannot just charge into it and then get ambushed um, or surprised. I think ambush is the correct term here. Defensive support, I think it allows your plane to reach a certain point on a hex and basically protect any unit within, I think, um, yeah, around it, I think, on the ground. So, also, I think, applies to helicopters, but I'm not so sure. So, the defensive support is a kind of artillery in a way uh, that it allows the units around it to be protected by your planes. So, that's it. And you can assign points here, as you can see here, and here, and here, and here, for example. And I don't think they recommend this in manual because you can sort of forget what's going to happen. Uh, and then the mission. I guess order of missions might be a bit different from how you set the points up. But as you can see, uh, I have set air recon cost 2 and have it clicked. So it, as you have this highlighted, if you um, yeah, fly the plan air missions, then you click here, press this button, and you can see what's up on the head. So let's just view the battlefield. It's a rather small map. Yeah, and there's three groups. So east, and I guess this is the central maybe, and this is the southwest. Let's see what's going on here right now. So the plane comes here. Yeah, and then reveals that whole load of defense uh, congregated around Artem or Suchan. Alright, so yeah, I see an um, anti-air vehicle. I think you'll be able to see... Yeah, I think this is definitely anti-air. So I'm going to target with Wild Weasel with its radical on. And as you can see here in People's General, there are different levels of identification. So you can see these guys, let me just get out of this, sorry. You can come back, I think the point will be, still be there. Yeah. So no air missions flown, but you can still exit and come back and fly it again. Here the identification is full and you basically know what they're about. 95 infantry. And this is mechanized infantry, which is a new addition. Um, yeah. There are basically no towed weapons or, you know, infantry being transported to and from. It's just mechanized infantry. It's very quick and fast and efficient. But then the identification here, as you can see, is basically revealed. This is a helicopter, and there are a lot of helicopters in this game. But here, you're not being able to click it, although there has been identification. It is um, the new concept here in Tenjo General. I think it's Fog of War or something. But then uh, there are three levels. One, I think there is only an outline or just a question mark, which allows you to uh, assume that there is something there. But you don't know what it is. Basically, what type or what class of weapons it is, you know, what kind of strength it has, whether it was overpowered or over strength. And the second level is just seeing um, the sprite here and just recognizing it for what it is. And I think this is anti-air, so I'm going to be targeting it with my Wild Weasel mission. And the third one is basically knowing everything and yeah, fully recognizing what they are. So let's just try to, uh, yeah, just attack them. You can see that it changes into a radical, which means that this is applicable mission. So if you fly here and try to use the Wild Weasel. Yeah, it's 273, very effective. And I think if your mission is successful just like it was, um, I think you get a partial percentage of the points back that you have spent on the mission. So it's imperative for you to make sure that the missions are, um, especially I guess in airstrikes and wild missile and defensive support, to be able to a certain, at least a good chance for your planes to be able to make it back you know, unharmed or unscathed. Alright, so airstrike, I can probably use airstrikes on all these tanks to soften them up. And since the anti-air is kind of not really doing great, 
Oh, I can do it a bit later, but let's see what's going to happen. The defensive support, I'm not going to do it right now. Alright, so let's see if I can move this. Um, not a lot of tanks, so I can probably try to requisition here. Oh, okay, so there's no Bello Prestige. Alright. I don't think I have a lot of uh, guys here, so let's just start with this one. Let's do the air recon once again. See, watch up here. I don't know how much of a hex it reveals, but it's a pretty good job here. Yeah, it does reveal at least the hex around each pathway. And let's do one more recon around here as well, because I don't know what is going on in the eastern side. Oh, okay, so this is rather undefended. So this is a good point for us to attack, make our first attack. In People's General, there are helicopters, a lot of them. Very effective, very flexible. It can fly around almost anywhere. This has just very large range. You can just go to almost like half of the map before it kind of, uh, I guess, runs out of fuel or operational range. It is able to attack with heavy weaponry with a plumb. Yeah, two hex range. So this is a very versatile unit. Uh, basically, terrain has no effect on each movement. And the only thing that is not good is that it's very vulnerable to um, particular type of anti-air. You know, the rocket propelled grenades or rockets that, you know, is mounted on shoulders, uh, shot from individual soldiers or something. I mean, that is probably what it is geared toward or it is targeted. And it's very vulnerable, so you need to make sure that you keep a close watch on what is happening on the ground. And those anti-air guys are pretty cheap to produce. Yeah, so 6 and 6. Okay, it's not bad. You can probably uh, keep on trying to bash them. So let's try to go and go back and yeah, finish them off. Spread them out. 6 and 3, and one of the tanks here should be able to overrun it. And this is another mechanized infantry. And this is a tank. M1A3 Abrams. And this guy has a leader. And unfortunately in People's General, uh, you don't get to see the faces. Of course in Pender General 2 it was just the same picture for every leader. But you know, at least it added a certain degree of personality to uh, the units. But then at least you can rename this guy. Uh, I don't know if you can do it, but I'm sure that you can rename this name designation to, I guess, give it that kind of... Um, special distinction to uh, the kind of leaders in your army. And this guy has recon ability and river assault. River assault is a trait, I think. And um, recon, I'm not so sure exactly what is the trait that you receive as part of being class and what is a unique trait that you are able to get. But some of the traits that you can purchase using prestige, just like you upgrade. Oh no, this is the trait, sorry. It's aggressive maneuver is the attack yeah, trait. Horse strike is the, the unique trait. Um, yeah, it's a really good tank. And this is the upgrade, sorry. There is an upgrade system here in Pimples General. It was not available in Pender General 2. But what it does is it gives your um, the unit more distinction in order to have even more wide range of operational strength or versatility uh, in the field of battle. And it becomes a really powerful unit to build your army around by. So you can rename your unit as like this, yeah. I just name myself Apple, for example. And record, yeah, no kills, but it's going to have a kill right now. It has the overrun function, just like in Panzer General 2. Normally tanks are not really good in this kind of environment. The city hexes. I think the effect is more pronounced in this game than Panzer General 2. Let's see what they have here. Nope, there's nothing. So I just continue on with my tank and capture it with this infantry. Yeah, so I captured it. And one of the objectives has been captured. So very good. Uh, very good showing. And you can see the map here, just like in Panzer General 2. Yeah, so I need to capture this. And that's it, isn't it? Or, yeah. These two and this in four turns. Alright, so what we have here. Um, we have a tank, a Type 92, a Chinese tank. A pretty good tank, and we have a whole lot of different... Uh, this is like a main force for us. 
and we have our artillery here we can damage this guy to a pretty good clip our entrenchment is zero fortunately for us so let's continue with shellacking this guy 7 and 4 not bad I played a bit of Pendrel General I'm sorry I played a bit of People's General I find the unit to be more resilient than Panzer General 2 very rare sight to see like a you know Bradley tank just overrunning some infantry like checkers for example like you know capturing pieces it's not going to be very frequent because units are very versatile and they're very defensive minded and I think they know how to defend itself especially for Chinese they have infantry numbers um, defaulting to or their normal infantry strength is 15 yeah I mean the infantry definitely carries the most of the fight in the Chinese army it seems although they have a lot of different tanks too alright so let's see if I have more air missions to the um, yeah let's do a recon once again I do have only six points left but I mean this is a short mission so I'll be able to make use of this yeah so nothing really okay so we are clear to just attack okay, let's use the helicopter to attack the tank which is what it is designed for basically yeah one and eight wow it destroyed a one fell swoop this is a leader, so that's why. Stealth pilot and all weather combat. Yeah, I think it was raining or something, no? Oh no, it's actually fair. But if it was raining, it would have losing none of the effectiveness. So it's very, very good. And it's unknown special equipment. I don't know why it is, but it's something that helped to destroy this tank. Very impressive. The light infantry, uh, 2001. As you can see, infantry has a special air transport. And what it does is it actually allows you to fly anywhere. But I believe they spend some air point here. So you need to be mindful of that. Yeah, you spend some of the air points. But yeah, this would be very handy if I'm able to like land here for example. I cannot land here, but I guess because this is outside of the visibility range, but I can probably land here and then continue on with the half of the movement figures still intact. So it's a really powerful feature. So I captured it um, using the effective maneuver. Yeah, alright, so the infantry, what can you do here? Yeah, you can do pretty good here. So let's capture it. And there's a tank that is able to overrun this guy. So let's go on that and do that. Alright, so making our way across here. Nice, and there's another one. As you can see, um, the first level of recognition of something is protecting this space is a question mark. And then if I go a bit further, uh, if I landed, if my tank landed on this hex, it might have been able to see that whether this was infantry or, um, you know, tank, but then it wouldn't have any strength figures. Yeah, mostly I think it's going to be 10. Alright, so let's see whether the recon can do some work. Yeah, there is this one and you can see the yeah it has not been fully identified so I cannot even click on it to see why it is I think this is uh, infantry mechanized infantry so I'm going to be going over with this MLRS which is a uh, pretty effective and powerful yeah, battery of artillery very very nice anti-tank I could have used anti-tank before against this tank but my helicopter did the work already so and this is the artillery that started the fight here. And uh, Petovka. So this is Russian land, isn't it? This is Russia. Oh my goodness. Why, what are Americans doing in Russia? Helping Russians. And why are Chinese in Russia? That is rather weird. But that is how the story goes in this game. Um, rather interesting. Okay, so I use the... Oh, no, this guy doesn't have the air transport. Or, yeah, current air point is 2. So I guess it costs 4 points to do the air missions. But let's go there anyways. Alright, thankfully, uh, some of the hotkeys are kind of shared between the two games. Didn't really change much. And the recon is not going to fare well against this Chinese Type 95 mechanized infantry. Sorry, just go back 
All right, so this guy, what can this guy do? I need more um, precision. 60 points, yeah, it's not really going to work. I need some help from this guy, so yeah. I mean, the helicopter with it. I mean, the helicopter could help here. That's the strength of helicopters, yeah. 67, yeah, not bad. I guess this guy will just hold. Yeah, like maybe entrench himself. Alright, so that's the first turn ending. Alright, the second turn. There was something here, so I need to use my recon to see. Yeah, there's a mechanized infantry. Okay, so these guys have uh, resupplied. And in people's general, resupply and replacement is a bit different. Let's say you have like a rather experienced unit, like 300 experience for example, that's 3 bars of experience, pretty good. But then you are like left to half health. You started out with 10 but now you're whittled down to 5 and you'd like to, of course, being that that is your elite unit, especially if it's a tank, want to resupply or even replace it. But if you replace it, depending on what you have chosen when you requisitioned this tank, it's going to be either have no experience or one bar experience or two bars experience, like here. What it means is that if you replace it with you know basically no experience units, then the available experience that you had remaining in your five strength unit is going to spread around with the rest of the uh, unit. So it's going to go down to two bars or even one bar. In back in Panzer General 2, you don't have that kind of problem. Five, you know, bars of experience is going to be five bars of experience. So you're going to have a super weapon, I guess, depending on, you know, whether you had enough prestige. But in this game, it doesn't eat into your prestige per se, but it's going to eat into your experience, which makes a bit more sense. Because, you know, the new recruit that's going to help pad the strength of your experience unit is going to not be as much of a better unit as it was before as the units that it is replacing so yeah you need to be very careful in especially if you're a chinese infantry with over strength 25 and then you are like down to five if you replace it with default recruit the green recruit then your, your experience is going to be just when it was just starting out so you gotta be very careful and this guy has obviously replaced hopefully with default recruit so let's attack once more and four uh, maybe this guy can go here again. Very powerful indeed. Alright, and this guy, let's not forget about these guys. And now I think, yeah, I missed a chance where I could just capture it. And now they have purchased a new unit here. Okay, so let's see if I can destroy it. Hopefully, it's M4. Is it overrunning? Yeah, overrunning. Good. And the tank is going to... Yeah, I don't know whether there's some units here, so let's check with the recon. Oh, I have gained 33. That is very impressive. I didn't really lose out anything from the previous turn. Okay, so now there's nothing there. At least around here. I guess I can go a bit farther. And infantry, infantry, I guess you can capture it. Yeah. Yeah, so eastern part of the... This area is pacified or stabilized a bit. Okay, so the tank has to probably move. Well, let, let's check this one first. Not airstrike, but recon. This one. Let's see what is up here, what is going on. Oh yeah, okay. I don't think I lost out a lot of stuff from that. Um, Okay, so what is this? Is this artillery? Oops, okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah, this is an artillery. Yeah, wow, okay. So this is one of those newfangled artillery that can shoot 10 hexes. Yeah, this modern weaponry is just faster. It has higher capabilities, wide ranges, more powerful, everything. It's very much of a Panzer General 2 on steroids. And I think this guy can shoot here. Yeah, look at that. It's amazing. Three and four. And I like to use the helicopter here. Let's finish them off. Yep, hopefully. Nice. Alright, so let's move this guy. Maybe... Nope. 
There is not a possibility of... Now I can do air transport here. Wow. So where can you land? Can you not land anywhere? Oh, you can land here. I don't know what's the different. Oh, I guess this operational range. No, I guess you can only land on roads. No? What is happening? Oh, I can land here. Where? Where can I land? Um, I guess this is not good. Yeah, I'm really not good because there is a uh, anti-air there, so... Where can I land? Oh, I can land here. I don't know why, but... I have to be a bit closer. Alright, let's land here anyways. And let's capture it. Yeah, okay. So... Uh, okay, so which to strike? I need some air missions. Uh, okay. Well, air strike. On this guy. Wow, look at that stealth bomber. Pretty cool. And a pretty good range, this guy. Nice, nice job. Okay, that was a pretty successful mission. And another artillery strike for this guy. Not artillery, bomber strike. And I think as far as the supporting different unit is concerned, it only gives out one one per turn. So you cannot just keep supporting the unit within your firing range. I think the artillery is the same as well. I think Panzer General 2, you can just support uh, your friendly units against the enemies attacking it as long as you have shells. But I think in this game, that's not the case. The limit is probably relegated to uh, one of the traits that you can have. Zero and three. So yeah, you can definitely see that the effectiveness goes down very heavily because of the fact that the infantry is in the within the city hex or the town hex. I can destroy or run it, which is that's what I wanted to do. And yeah, definitely it's not really effective here. And can I really make any headway? No, I can't. Alright. Uh, I can shoot at this guy, but I think this guy deserves it a bit more. And then, can I destroy it with the recon? No, I can't. Yeah, okay. Alright, inventory move. Let's just swamp them with infantry first. Let's see if I can do well. Nope, I can't. There's some infantry here. Alright, air defense definitely needed, I think, because of the presence of helicopter. And what is happening here? Okay, still trying to crawl across the map. This guy will round out the rest. Yeah, I'll be closer. Uh, I think this will be good enough. And can you shoot? Yeah, you can still shoot. It's a two-range gun. Now he runs away. Too bad I cannot land anywhere close to it. Yeah, I kind of blocked. Um, yeah. Can I destroy it by airstrike? No, I have nothing there anymore. Okay, no air points. I've just spent it all. Too bad. So sad. Okay, let's see if I can go into here and be resilient for a change. Yeah, 1 in 5. That's a pretty good number. Looks like a hard target, but it's actually not. Oh, it is a hard target, but it's actually infantry. It does have a very nice close attack and close defense. The best of both worlds, although it doesn't have the stepping capability of a tank. Alright, so let's go to another turn. I yeah, hope I don't fail the tutorial. And now here it comes. Yeah, that was a pretty good shot. Against the elite. Yeah, you can see that the air defense has work. It's magic. Attack broken off. Nice. All I now have to do is to capture these two points. And I have driven back this guy, but it's not really needed anymore. And yeah, as you can see here, it's 3 and 2. And why? But you can definitely see that there is artillery in support of this unit. That's why. I need to, of course, use Wild Weasel and everything again in order to soft them up. Uh, let's go two airstrikes and let's get this guy first and get this tank. Yeah, that's good. I can 
probably overrun it. And another one against the tank. Yeah, 1 and 8. American air power is definitely impressive. 8 under 1. Wow, this that's pretty lucky for us. And that poor Chinese helicopter is in for uh, not a really fun uh, uh, engagement with this linebacker. And I found you know, this fresh to be rather similar. I mean, it has a reason. Um, as a modern weaponry developed into a more streamlined, I guess, manufacturing process, I don't know, miniaturization and whatnot, I think they have developed a platform upon which they can install different weapons in order to produce different kinds of weapons out of one platform. I think that's where, you know, these kind of weapons come from. It does share the same platform as this Bradley AT, but then has different function. And this one has anti-tank function, which I'm going to be trying against this guy. And this is just infantry. Um, so, I mean, it's a really versatile platform. I think China has it, Russia has it, everybody has it. This guy is destroyed. Okay, good. Uh, Alright, so I guess I pound this guy. And you can see now that I do not suffer any um, drawback because, you know, this guy has been whittled down. Yeah, during three. Okay, so I guess it... Decreased entrenchment or something? No? Okay, anyways, yeah. I can shoot. Wow, okay, I didn't expect I can shoot across. But, yeah, good. Alright, so... I guess I can capture this and destroy this guy. Make sure that I don't need to capture anything else. There's a lone airfield, but yeah, that is not of my concern. Alright, okay, good. Uh, let's just pound this guy and you know, win the mission. Simple enough. I mean, the Chinese defender was no match because obviously this tutorial is just so strong in terms of available weapons for the Americans, that's for sure. Okay, so can any of this guy reach here? Air defense, recon. I guess we can, can go in there. Yeah, 1 in 5, not bad. It's out of the city square, so its effectiveness is drastically lowered. And it has replaced a couple of times, so it doesn't have any experience left, as you can see. Yeah, River Assault is pretty useful as well if you're coming out of the river and try to attack. And let's see if I can, yeah, look at that. I can use it. Um, I can't go too close, but yeah, I can land here. If I get the hang of it, concept of this uh, air superiority and transport, this game is going to be you know, very very interesting in terms of how it plays, and it's going to be rather different from... Okay, so Western Victory, 7th Victory Hex is captured. Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting and dynamic, uh, for example, and it's going to be more fast-flowing and more... I bet there are more opportunities and chances for me to fail uh, the missions because I bet the AI is going to use them too liberally. Especially when I go up against Americans. Americans have probably a huge pool of air points that they can dispense in any other ways, um, they have, you know, as you can see, stealth bombers. Yeah, stealth bombers probably was a thing, yeah, even in 2000 or something. I, I'm just joking. Yes, they were. Yeah, but it's, it seems like uh, rather similar from the outset, but if you start playing it, you definitely notice some changes. And it's going to be even more pronounced because I'm playing right now, pending your approval, People's General 3.0. Uh, I don't know, I, I show you, I show you right now. I guess you can build a battlefield, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, the helicopters are very useful, and this guy was trying to go across the canyon here, but yeah, there's no need for that. Yeah, so this is the... This has been, I guess, short introduction tutorial. And um, as far as campaign is concerned, this is going to be uh, the main meat of Let's Play, of course, uh, the original SSI campaigns. There's a Western campaign, which is basically the United States pushing back against China after they have advanced through uh, different territories, their rifle territories that they claim. Eastern campaign is when China, you know, sets out after the declaration of war by the United States. You know, I guess there are fingers on their trigger for nuclear weapons, but first they need to do something to make sure that... I don't know, I'm not so sure, I'm just joking, but it's kind of funny that there are no nuclear weapons or the specter of mutually assured destruction in this game. Might have been interesting if there was on the top of the air superiority button, there's like a nuclear weapons button or something. Um, just for some kind of gameplay. I don't know how it would have fit into the overall gameplay, but 
kind of weird that it doesn't have that very important part of what is, I guess, what is changing the shape of the political landscape and the military power. Okay, so this is when China uh, sets out to dominate East Asia um, in defiance of the United States and, I guess, the UN, I don't know. Railroaded is a UN force special mission that I think it happens in Russia, as it says the UN forces attack Russian rebels and their Chinese allies. Okay, that's rather interesting. New World Order is another, I think, official SSI campaign also. Yeah, Vietnam tries to conquer Southeast Asia. Okay, uh, Korea Revisited, I think it's a more focused element of the Western campaign. And mini campaign, and I think this is a bit more of a different aspect of the first two campaigns, a different variation, if you will. So I guess I play this five or this four first. Yeah, it's going to be a long haul if I try to, if I actually end up playing all this. And then orders could be a bit different. Uh, first of all, a Western campaign is supposed to be the first one that the game suggests you to play, but in terms of timeline, doesn't seem to be seem to be a bit you know jumping ahead a bit because obviously this is after the Americans got their you know uh, got punched in the face and then now they're trying to fight back. Eastern campaign seems to be the first one, or even railroaded, but this is supposed to be the hardest mission, the hardest campaign. So I don't know what campaign to start. Right now, I'm thinking about Eastern campaign first, then Western campaign. And there's a side story um, doing railroaded and Vietnam mission. Or I can do Eastern campaign, New World Order, and then go to Western and railroaded. So communist countries first, and then the Western powers to follow. I'm not so sure. So um, I'm kind of leaning toward doing Eastern campaign first. That is the sure thing. Although it might be a bit harder as I control the Chinese forces. Anywho, yeah, I mean, that's my plan right now, uh, so regardless of whether I'm going to be playing uh, People's General 1, 2, or 3, I wish there was actually People's General 3 updated to 2015 graphics or something. Yeah, I mean, you cannot really assume that the current right holder, which is Ubisoft, going, you know, out of their way to produce new material. I think they're going to just go for, like, they did with Assassin's Creed, go to iPad or something, or mobile games in terms of People's General. I think there's a People's General game, but it was a whole different game. I don't know whether it was card game or something um, that was released a bit earlier, I think last year, but I don't know. Ubisoft should definitely release this game on GOG.com or any other SSI game that they still have rights to. You know, make some sales, make more money. And if they release a new People's General game, for example, they can probably include it. Or even uh, some entrepreneurial spirit or mind can buy this from Ubisoft and and the uh, original executable, then it's going to open a whole lot of possibilities to make this game even better. HD graphics and whatnot. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, but right now, this is the best that we're going to get. I'm pretty thankful for what I have. Yeah, so... Alright, so that's been the... I guess I got on a bit too long discussing, you know, the... The whole context where or vacuum in which this game exists, like internal ethnic problems, it does seem to draw upon a certain aspect of reality as it present right now even. So it's kind of semi-realistic but still I mean it's a kind of fantasy and you know, we all love fantasy, right? I mean we all I mean the North Americans for example really do think of different ways that they can be invaded. Like it was like first I think it was Nazis, then came the Russians. And then the aliens and natural disasters, that they think of a whole different ways to uh, be like obliterated or be faced with certain doom. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that I hope that you're okay with me uh, playing People's General, having another go at this type of game. I frankly uh, have kind of missed it, although I did play some scenarios here and then, uh, Pendra General 2 scenarios. Here, this is like whole enchilada, like so many scenarios and so many campaigns, I don't know where to start. I'll start with the campaign's Eastern mission and see where it goes. So tell me if you'd like me to play the first version, second version, or third version. I hope that I have made some of the differences clear. The third version has all the updates, all the bells and whistles. 
they are implemented to refine the gameplay to what it is now and I think it is more compatible with a lot more scenarios than are available. One is special in the fact that it's most closest to the game that has been released in its full. It has certain different gameplay or the I guess, graphical user face difference and has a certain amount of... I'll show you what's the difference. That's the best thing I think. So this is Panzer General 1.0 and as you can see the map I mean this is probably the original um, the title that welcomed you as you started the game where, where is North America? Where, where is it? You know I guess the war is basically here so that's why they focused on a particular uh, region and maybe they even thought about releasing an expansion that covers the entire world but anywho yeah the biggest Let's see, tutorial. I don't know whether this actually shows the difference. Well, I mean, it does look the same, isn't it? Yeah, looks the same. What gives? But then, as you can see, the interface is a bit different. Ah, yes, here we go. Yeah, so the difference you can see is very clear. Well, yeah, you have a bit of extra prestige to start with. Well, making this a bit easier than it was. First time I played this. But then you have something called Alliance. Which means that within an alliance, you can purchase the... As you can see in the introduction, there are different flags flying, representing the alliance. Well, all that nation's weaponry and... Yeah, weaponry is available for you to freely peruse and purchase. Such as Challenger 2. Wow. Type 90, what is this? This, this is crazy, the Japanese tank. And Korean tanks, Singaporean tanks. Wow, this is Taiwanese tanks and even UN tanks. My goodness. Yeah, so... Is that Ukraine? Ukrainian tanks and Russian tanks side by side. I mean, how much of a tight-knit alliance could it get? Yeah, you can probably purchase everything within the alliance countries. And then you can even upgrade from Russian tank to American tanks and vice versa. Um, it's a bit different from how it worked in Panzer General 2, as in Panzer General 2 you had coalitions. You can bring in, you know, American tanks for example in the Western campaign, and then British tanks for example. But you cannot go nearly really and try to upgrade American into British tank and, you know, conduct some kind of magical alchemy that changes the tanks into different nationalities and whatnot. Uh, although there was some crossover, but it was actually defined into a specific countries and that's the I guess temporary alliance called coalition and I think the mothers thought that this was thing that they would not want to deal with because that's not how military I guess works I agree because back then you know they were able to pull their resources and were to just purchase from the I guess I guess it was not really unlimited but they had certain amount of pool of resources that they could kind of interchange with each other in terms of armament but now I think the nations kind of keep controls tight upon their own weaponry and armies and structures. So even though they might go into an alliance, for example, they have their own structures of power or the authority that manages everything. But I think this is kind of a more of a broad stroke of what would have been possible, what would have been interesting uh, if, for example, there were some German tanks trying to free up Russia from Chinese as a part of a UN force or part of a forces that are allied with each other. Yeah, it would be pretty fun. I think the game might be a bit easier because there's certain flexibility associated with this. But I don't know, I think I like the 3.0 version better where there are definite, you know, different order or boundaries upon which you can purchase. You can make a purchase as a commander of a United States Army. You know, you definitely be limited to uh, having access to only United States weapons, not German weapons and whatnot. I don't know. It just seems more natural that way. So, I mean, you can bring in like Korean tanks and Australian tanks and German tanks. I mean, they look fierce. It looks like some Tiger 3 or something. You can buy it and then bring it and, of course, attack Chinese tanks. Yeah, look at that. It's possible, but I mean, this is definitely, in a way, uh, kind of worthwhile in its own right to have the different version. And then uh, see how it 
you know, works out. And this was original game. This is what people played when this game was originally released. Please tell me what you think about it, whether you love to see German tanks rolling across China or Russia or Korean or Singaporean tanks in, um, I don't know, what countries would this game be set? I don't know, whether it be Vietnam or uh, Thailand, uh, you know, Korea, for example, you can probably, you know, put Russian tanks or Kazakhstan tanks in Korea, for example. Wow, my goodness, I mean, that is crazy, but it is possible, I think, they're willing to play the game in that way. So please tell me what you'd like to see, and I will go with that. Yeah, so version 2.0, most significant fact is it gets rid of these alliances. So it's basically similar to 3.0, but 3.0 kind of adds more, I think, to the 2.0. I'm sure that 2.0 has some features related to it, such as expanded roster of countries and recruitment, a new e-file, for example. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that I noticed. So alright, hope you enjoy this overview of different versions. I hope that I'll be able to continue on this LP. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I hope that you enjoy this, uh, I guess, rather long introduction. I don't know, I was able to explain things more clearly. I will explain things as I go along in playing this game. This was the introduction for People's General. Game that I'm going to be playing for, I don't know, like a long time. I hope that you enjoy it. And the next time, wait for the Eastern Campaign to start. So until then, please stay tuned and stay cool.